Hi there, I'm Tom Wills. I'm a camera and Steadicam operator and a Steadicam teacher. And today I'm gonna to do a video to go through my method for getting a Steadicam sled into static and especially dynamic balance as quickly and efficiently as possible. So let's talk about how I got this rig ready for balancing. My first step was to bring the gimbal almost all the way up the post, which makes sure that when I put the camera on it, it's going to be bottom heavy. So when I put it up to balance, it's not gonna immediately flip over or do anything else chaotic. The next thing I did was set up my monitor. I pushed my monitor all the way out, which is what I like to maximize pan inertia, make the rig very stable as it pans. I also raised the monitor yoke up a bit in relation to the bottom of the rig. This helps with visibility. I want to be able to see my monitor over the top of my gimbal handle without having to hunch over, which would hurt my back. I then put on batteries. Now, you're going to put on the amount of batteries you need for the power and counterweight needs you have for your specific build. For me, I put on two batteries, and these batteries are about two pounds each. Where I put them in relation to the center post depends on their weight, the weight of the monitor, and how far out the monitor is extended. So I know that that monitor is about four pounds, and I'm going to use the width of my hand as a ruler to measure how far it is off the center post. We don't have to be very precise. This is just getting us in the ballpark. So if I measure with my hand, the center of gravity of this monitor is about two and a half hands off the center post. Because these batteries weigh about four pounds total, and the monitor weighs about four pounds total, I'm going to make their distance off their center post about the same. So I'm going to measure here, and these batteries are pretty close to two and a half hands off the center post. Now, if your rig looked very different than this and your monitor was very high, your batteries might need to be in a bit closer and you can develop the proportion in your head for how far these items need to be off the center post in relation to each other. The other thing to note is if we were to swap one of these lightweight batteries for a much heavier battery, then we might have to change this proportion. This now weighs almost eight pounds, and that weighs about four pounds. So I don't want these to be at equal distances. If that's about two and a half hands off the post, I want this to be one and a quarter hands off the post. That seems about right. Again, this is a starting point, and this will get us close enough that dynamic balance will become relatively easy. All right, so now that we've got the rig set up, it's time to balance. I'm gonna throw the camera on, and I know that its center of gravity is somewhere around the back of this battery. So I'm gonna put that a little behind the center of the post, lock it in, and let's see how balancing works. I'm gonna make sure I put this over a leg of the stand so it doesn't tip over as we're doing all of this. And you can see, straight out of the gate, that doesn't look too bad. Maybe I'll slide the camera a bit to make it look decent. But the question is, what's our drop time? Because if this rig is really bottom heavy, it'll actually mask it being out of balance. So I'm going to see what our bottom heaviness is. I'm going to take the rig to about a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to let it go. One, 1,000. Ooh. That's really bottom heavy. So we actually can't tell how good the balance is. To fix that, I'm gonna take the rig horizontal. Always make sure the rig is horizontal before you unlock the gimbal clamp. And I'm gonna slide the gimbal down the post until I see that it's no longer top nor bottom heavy. Always keeping a hand on either the camera or the post. Then I'm gonna slide the gimbal up the post just a little bit so that it's bottom heavy again but only a tiny bit. Let's bring it back to 45 and check our drop time again. I'm aiming for about a two and a half second drop time. One, 1,000, two, 1,003. Well, looks pretty good. So we're at about a two and a half second drop time and we can now see that our rig is out of static balance. 
to bring it back into balance, I'm going to pick whatever seems the worst of its axes. Right now, I think that four and aft is pretty bad, so I'm going to use my left hand, which is my operating hand, hold the rig level, and I'm going to turn the knob. I'm doing this so that when I turn this knob, it doesn't throw the rig out of whack. So I'm going to give it a few good turns, let go, and see, is it still falling forwards? Just a little bit. Bring it back to level. Another quick turn. I went a little too far. Coming back. And that looks pretty good front to back. Now let's do side to side. Again, same process. Bring the rig to level with my operating hand. A couple quick turns on the knob. And pretty good. I can make it a little better. And one more little tweak. And great. So the rig is now balanced. We're in perfect static balance, no problem. And if you're out of time, this is ready to shoot. If they're going, where's the camera? Well, here it is, we're ready to go. But if you've got time, or you're gonna be doing a shot with a lot of whip pans, or even just a lot of panning in general, your operating will be more precise if you dynamic balance now. So dynamic balance is balancing while the camera is panning. And if the camera is out of dynamic balance, as it pans, it'll either tilt up or tilt down. To test dynamic balance, we need the rig to pan. But rather than grabbing the gimbal and twisting like a whip pan, we're going to spin it up to speed very delicately so we don't accidentally throw it off. I'm going to use my thumb and index finger right here below the bearing to very gently spin the rig up to speed. We don't need it going very fast, and we want to make sure we're not imparting any other force, just rotation. As we do, we're looking for a consistent repeating pattern to emerge. And that pattern will be either tilting up or tilting down. If it doesn't do either, you're already in dynamic balance. This is a small movement, so it's a little hard to see up on the camera. It's much easier to see on the gimbal yoke here because it only rotates in one direction, down and up. So I want you to look at where the lens is facing, that side of the gimbal yoke goes down. It's coming around this side and it goes down. Now it comes around this side and this side goes down. So the camera is tilting down as it rotates. That knowledge that the camera is tilting down as it rotates is enough for us to be able to fix dynamic balance. So I'd like you to imagine the rig was hanging like this, tilting down. We'd want to fix that by moving some weight uphill, either the top or the bottom. For dynamic balance, we're going to move the bottom first. B for bottom, C for camera, B before C. We're going to make it better with the bottom. To make this better, we need to move weight uphill, so we're going to move the battery back maybe three quarters of an inch, maybe a little more. Now, obviously we're out of static balance, so we need to compensate with the camera. See, I'm gonna move the camera forward until we're back in static balance. Better with the batteries, compensate with the camera. Now, we're back in static balance. I'm checking to make sure nothing else has drifted, and I'm gonna give it another spin, and what you'll see is that the rig now spins quite flat. This may not be perfect on your first try. You may have to try again, but so long as it doesn't tilt up or down as it spins, you've found dynamic balance. If it is still tilting the way it was tilting before, if it was tilting down and it's still tilting down, you just need to go a bit further with your movement. If it was tilting down and now it's tilting up, You've gone a little too far. Just go slightly back. But this is pretty darn good. I'd say that's almost perfect dynamic balance. Certainly better than my hand will be during a whip pan. So our rig is in dynamic balance. It's quite straightforward and quite easy. But there are a couple small things that can catch you when you're trying to do this. One of them is that if you are, for instance, a new operator and you're struggling with how much hand pressure to put into the rig, if you try and spin the rig up to get it in dynamic balance, 
Ooh, I thought this rig was in dynamic balance a moment ago. It was, and it still is in dynamic balance. My hand pressure was just so much that it threw the whole rig off. Now, I've got to bring it back into balance because I whacked the batteries pretty hard. But what's notable about this is that if you're having trouble panning the rig consistently to get it in dynamic balance, that's okay. Practice this. It's actually good practice for doing a very delicate pan, but also don't stress about it, especially if you're new. The difference between a rig in and out of dynamic balance is definitely less than where your skills are. The other thing to note is that if you have a rig that is grossly out of dynamic balance, that you set up, for instance, with the monitor all the way in and the batteries all the way out, we can get this rig in static balance relatively easily by moving the camera. But if we were to try and dynamic balance this rig, even though it is in static balance, we're going to have a very hard time. We're going to have a very hard time because if we try to spin this, even if we do so delicately, it's going to immediately do crazy things. It's going to tilt up quite a lot, it might hit the stand, it might seem like it's going sideways, it might seem like the pattern of how it rotates isn't consistent. It's going to be very hard to gauge what's actually going on with dynamic balance because we're actually so far out of dynamic balance. So the first thing to do is always do a little bit of a sanity check. Think about the proportions we talked about earlier. If this monitor is four pounds and it's only a hand and a half off the post, then four pounds of batteries also want to be a hand and a half off the post. Somewhere around there. Now if we bring the camera into balance, we'll be very, very close to dynamic balance. trimming the stage just a little bit to compensate for any misalignment in the battery and monitor. And if I now give this a spin, you can see that this is now very, very close to dynamic balance, if not perfectly there. So the proportions help you get to dynamic balance very quickly quickly enough that it really adds no time to your day. Now, one added tip about dynamic balance. If you're worried about not having the time on set to do this, or you're stressed out about not being able to do a very delicate pan, you can actually preset the rig into dynamic balance when you're at home practicing. You can take the rig and set it up the way you're going to use it on set with the same batteries, the same monitor positioning, and mark everything once you've got it into dynamic balance. Then, even if you change the camera, even if the camera is a drastically different weight, as long as the proportions of where these are in relation to each other, both in height and distance, stay the same, the rig will actually come out of the case in dynamic balance. This is a wonderful trick and it means you don't have to worry about sitting there and spinning it over and over on set. Your rig can start the day in dynamic balance with basically no work. Well, I hope that's helpful. Your pans should be better now, and hopefully you'll be a better operator for it.